Community leader Hugo Cuellar was shot in November, leaving the wake of a murdered colleague. Miraculously, he survived. The bullet entered here and reached my intestine. The bullet is still there. Thank God I was able to pull through. It must have been God's mercy. Two other leaders of the Ascatje Farmer Association in southern Colombia weren't as lucky. And more killings of land activists and supporters of the peace deal are happening in once rebel-controlled areas across the country. We believe the enemies of peace are trying to decapitate social organizations at a time when the accord is promising change, giving us a political role for the first time in decades. At least 17 rural leaders have been killed since the signing of a peace deal at the end of September. Another 60 cases have been documented since the beginning of 2015. For many on the political left in the country, it's a depressingly familiar story. Some 3,000 members of the leftist Patriotic Union were killed by paramilitaries operating as proxies of the state during previous talks in the 1980s. La matanza está dirigida. This is again a systematic massacre with intellectual authors and financial backers to get rid of those who have the power to mobilize people in defense of their rights and land. So far, no clear evidence has emerged, but many believe the vacuum left by a disarming FARC is empowering criminal groups interested in taking over profitable illegal businesses and the Accord most extreme opponents. There are a lot of interests at play right now. And, you know, for us, one of the main problems is the fact that, that FARC had been imposing a certain amount of order and no longer is there. Doesn't mean that some of these killings aren't political and that those killings could be related to certain individuals that are trying to undermine the peace process. President Juan Manuel Santos ordered stepped-up protection for community leaders and called for a quick implementation of the peace deal that's been bogged down by political infighting. So far, only two cases have been resolved, too little too late, for those who feel that a renewed bloodshed could derail a hopeful but uncertain peace. Alessandro Ampietti, Al Jazeera, San Juan de Los Alamos.